Okay, picking back up where we left off, uh, I said that for um, somebody with a vocal tract of my length, like myself or Peter Latifoged, uh, F1 would generally be 500 hertz for kind of a default schwa vowel. Uh, F2 would be 1500 hertz, F3 would be 2500 hertz, just nicely, evenly spaced apart from each other. Uh, but you can change the shape of the vocal tract to get different resonant frequencies. Uh, we kind of played around with this a little bit when we were creating these uh, three sine wave vowels before. Uh, so I'll play them again. Oops. Right, so all I did here um, was create some complex uh, sound waves with three different sine waves added together. Um, and I just have to put these in sort of the right part of the frequency scale where you normally get resonances for these vowels or formats for these vowels to give you the percept that we have different vowels. Like this is E, and this is U, and this is A. This is, they don't sound like natural vowels, of course. So um, what does it look like when we have natural vowels? Um, here's a couple of examples for myself. E, U, A. Uh, uh, and it's kind of easy to see here to start off with what with this U vowel. So for U, we have two relatively low uh, resonant frequencies that characterize the vowel. So F1 is pretty low, F2 is pretty low. Go back to this example. This first sine wave is low, the second sine wave is low. Um, for ah, they're harder to see. F1 is relatively high, F2 is relatively low, so they are kind of glommed on top of each other and it's kind of hard to pick them apart. Uh, for E, you can see it a little bit better. F1 is low and F2 is relatively high. Um, this is kind of a phantom formant in here, so we'll try to ignore that. But you can see that pattern here, F1 is uh, low and F2 is high for E. And for ah, the two are kind of just glommed on top of each other. E, U, A. Uh, with Peter Lafog and his, uh, I have some samples of him doing this as well. Um, they're not uh, as nicely recorded, but uh, same general pattern. E, U, A. So there's a little bit of noise here in the background, which kind of obscures the um, pattern of the upper performance, but you can still see for, he has a genuinely ooh, a back ooh, which means that his uh, first two formats are really right on top of each other there. Uh, here's F1 and F2 for ah. The easiest one to see for him is F1 is low for his E and F2 is up here, uh, relatively high. E. But same general pattern. Uh, this is how vowels work. Uh, so I wanna relate this to what we learned about vowels a long time ago, uh, which is that they're articulated with characteristic tongue and lip shapes. Uh, so we talked about this originally as if um, these vowels had uh, could be described by where the highest arch of the tongue was when you produce them. So for E, we talk about the high front position of the tongue. Um, so we move it forwards and we move it pretty close to the palate. So that's front and high. Uh, with U, we're also still pretty high. So the tongue is close to the palate, but it's in a backer position here. Uh, so you shove the tongue back. And then for an ah, you keep it back, but you lower it. Uh, so it's a low back vowel and you're nowhere near um, the palate anymore. You're closer to the pharynx. Uh, we can add that for an ooh, you tend to round the lips as well. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. But generally speaking, uh, for this reason, you can describe vowels by kind of where the tongue is and what you're doing with the lips. And then we also have this kind of odd dimension called tense and lax, uh, which we can kind of generally describe as distance from the center of the vowel space. But the tongue determines what's happening with the first two dimensions. We're going to think of those in a different way uh, by the end of today. So uh, Daniel Jones kind of set the standard for what this is supposed to sound like with his uh, cardinal vowel. So this, like his E is supposed to be the highest frontest vowel you can get in this space. Num, num, one. One. E. And his ah is supposed to be the lowest backest vowel you can get in this Number space. Five. Ah. And his oo is supposed to be the highest backest roundest vowel. Number eight. eight. <laughs> so um, Number eight. Uh, every single other vowel is just sort of like spaced evenly amongst those three landmarks, right? Um, so you go down the scale in the front Number four three. vowels, uh, hopefully as evenly as, po as you possibly can until you get to the low back vowel and then you move your way up while rounding your lips more until you get to the oo. These are the primary cardinal vowels. Um, it turns out you can get to the same chart a different way, though. Um, 
So vowels are primarily distinguished by their first two formant frequencies, F1 and F2. Those are the ones we have to care about. So remember, these rep represent resonances of the vocal tract. Uh, and F1 corresponds to vowel height. So a lower F1 is going to be a higher vowel, and a higher F1 is going to be a lower vowel. So this is a little bit confusing uh, because we're kind of switching the terms here. Um, but yeah, I'll show you my chart here in a second. So if I have a low F1, like I saw for E and U on the previous slides, then I have a high vowel in terms of how we normally think of its articulation. But if I have a high F1, like for ah, then I have a lower vowel in the space, like my, my tongue is actually in a low position. We're not actually going to worry anymore about where your tongue is uh, when you produce these vowels because we get a lot better information out of the acoustics for these. Um, so try to think of it in these terms, but just remember this general, the general relationship. Um, F2 corresponds to front backness. So higher F2 is a fronter vowel. So you saw, remember E had a low F1 and a high F2. E is a front vowel, so we get a high F2. Uh, and the backer vowels, U and A, ah, have lower F2. Um, so their F2 is kind of glommed down on top of uh, their F1. Um, I'm going to show this to you in this little chart I drew, which is what I normally draw on the board in class. Uh, and hopefully you can see this. I'm going to try to show it so that I can see it as well. Uh, but the way you draw it out in a chart is kind of backwards from the way it's normally done um, in math class. Instead of having the origin point down here in the lower left part of the space, you draw it up here in the upper right hand uh, part of the space. And F1 is going to be plotted on the vertical dimension. And basically lower F1s are up here, so they give you high vowels. And higher F1s are down here, so they give you lower vowels. Uh, so I'll actually add a little bit of something to this vowel space. Um, use my mini marker here. So remember we have e, u, a, and a. We'll draw it like that, like this. So I've got my high vowels of e and u there with a low F1. <clears throat> and then F2 is um, determined by the horizontal or the x dimension. Uh, so a high F2, remember uh, it's rising going in that direction. High F2 gives you front vowels like E or maybe A. Uh, and then a low F2 gives you backer vowels like U and A. Ah. Um, so I've got those labels down here as well. Um, I'm going to pause right there because this is an important chart to sort of digest. Uh, it's the one we're going to be working with for the class for the rest of the semester. So make sure you understand it. Uh, but I'll give you a demo in the next uh, episode.